Hi, my name is Kathy Moyne and we're here at Green Thumb Nursery in Lake Forest, California to talk about the top 12 perennials that are heat tolerant. So top, top 12 heat tolerant perennials. Since we're coming into the dog days of summer, we can still plant some things and these guys are what I've got right here are very tolerant of the heat as long as we do it when we plant them if we're going to plant them do it in the early morning or late afternoon when it's not so hot and it's easier for us anyway um, the plants would rather not be stressed out when it's hot either so keep that in mind so I just thought I'd go over these real quick and give you some tips on um, their habits and there you go there you have it so where to start there's so many pretty things right here I think I'll start with the one on my right this is called a Cape Plumbago Royal Cape Plumbago and there are a few other Plumbagos out there but this one here is nice because well it's blue which there's not many blue uh, vibrant blue plants out there and this one flowers most of the warm months so from about April, May, all the way into October, November. And um, this one only gets about six foot tall. There's another one, six foot by six foot. There's another one that we sell that can take over the world. You see it up in LA a lot of times. It's all over the sides of the, the freeways. That's the regular Cape Plumbago. This is a Royal Cape Plumbago. So he, he stays a little more uh, under control. Let's put it that way. Um, they like full sun all of these plants that I'm going to feature today are full sun plants and this one here will attract some butterflies and some hummingbirds interesting note is the flowers are sticky so if you have dogs with long hair this may not be one you want because these these little flowers stick see how they kind of stick to my finger so that's that's what they do so we can we always kind of joke whenever somebody's been messing with the plant with the plumbagos they're <laughs> got one stuck to their shirt or something like that but other than that this is really a great performer and it's uh, very drought tolerant once established now when I say drought tolerant that means it's been in the ground for about two years and it's established but as these guys establish into the ground it takes about two weeks for them to finally start rooting into the soil then then they can dry out a little more between the watering so when your first two weeks on most of these guys you want to keep a little on the moist side i wouldn't water them every day but at least check them to make sure that they are getting what they need before they get established so they can get established um, next one i'm going to talk about this one is a budleia and i have featured these before i like the budleias because they give a lot of great color they're easy to trim, they're easy to maintain. Some of them can get about eight to 10 feet. Some of them can't, some of them are dwarfs. They only get three to four feet. And they're pretty easy to deadhead. So as you can see, I got some dead flowers right here. You just pinch that off and then it leaves the other flowers that are there and that are coming on. And they do come on fairly quickly, the ones that are not have not bloomed, but this one has got a lot of full bloom on it right now and um, these are butterfly and hummingbird attractors these will this is called a butterfly bush budlia and um, it does go a little deciduous in the winter time but it sure likes the heat it sure likes this summer weather so the next one this one is a type of grevillea this one is called duraflame and as you can see it's got some pretty little pink flowers and this one like i said is in the grevillea family and i did do a video on grevilleas so these are um very drought tolerant they don't need a lot of fertilizer which is one of these are one of those plants where you can kind of shove them somewhere where you want to forget about them like on slopes they're really great for slopes hummingbirds and butterflies also like these plants and bees as well they'll they'll attract some bees and so was the so does the budlia that one also attracts bees now this one here has got a few dead dead branches on it or dead flowers that are sped but i've got some buds here oh you can see the little buds right here and then i've got the dead stuff right here and so i'm just going to trim those off trim off those little branches that are that are not doing anything and when we do that we call that deadheading and we get rid of these uh, dead flower heads and what that does is that encourages the plant to go ahead and continue growing more flowers 
So it's it the this is Mother Nature's way of making sure that the plant is going to perpetuate itself. So they put on flowers and then hopefully seeds, and then if we cut off those little flowers or those dead flowers and the little seed pods, they're like, uh oh. I got to put on more seeds, so I better put on some more flowers. So then that kind of helps to keep them flowering and it just makes them look better too. So it's really an easy one to take care of. This one is here again, full sun, very uh, drought tolerant once established. These guys do not need a lot of fertilizer. This one here does, does only wants nitrogen, which is that first number in your three numbers on your fertilizer. It does not want phosphorus, potassium. The way they, where they come from, they have developed it, uh, developed themselves to be able to get nutrient from basically nothing. So these guys are really good for that place where you really don't, can't get to, or just want to forget about. Then we have this one here is the sweet pea shrub. This is a dwarf petite butterfly sweet pea shrub, and this one gets about four foot by four foot, and it makes a nice little round mound. And it has these sweet little sweet pea flowers that you see the little bee kind of buzzing around here because I also have lots of bee attractors in this this here. I've not really seen hummingbirds get on this one or butterflies, but they might. I just never really have noticed it. But these flower year round, even in the winter time. These are very drought tolerant. They do not want a lot of water. They want to be soaked and allowed to dry out between waterings. Most people kill them with kindness. When they start turning yellow, that's usually a sign that they're staying too wet. So again, first two weeks, you want to keep them on the moist side. All of these plants would be happy if you let them dry out between waterings. This one in particular. Um, sometimes putting these next to a lawn may not be a good idea because they really don't like that extra water, even if they're not being watered directly. So keep that in mind. But this one is a good four foot by four foot full sun plant, and it will give you lots of flowers. Okay, I've got my little guy here. This one is Evolvulus. Blew my mind. Here's another blue flower that is not so common in the garden. And this is a ground cover. This one will take full sun. It will spread about three feet and it flowers off from about March till December. So this one is a really good one. It's great for pots. You can put it in a pot, it'll hang down. I did a video on uh, redoing old pots and this was one of the ones I used because I like how it cascades. I've seen it with a lot of different plants. It's very versatile. This one can take a lot of water or it can take a little water. So you don't want to overwater it, obviously. You want to let it dry out. But um, this one is a good choice for a ground cover or something hanging over a pot. Then it brings us to good old ivy geranium. Now this one, I like this one because of the dual color, the pink and the white on there, but they come in all different colors except for yellows. Um, there are a few oranges um, and blues. I haven't seen any blue geraniums or orange or uh, yellow geraniums, but who knows, maybe one day. This one is an ivy geranium, so he stays about 18 inches, grows about, this one grows about two to three feet. There's a couple of them called Cascade geraniums, ivy geraniums that will, <laughs> plumbago, that will spread pretty far. It actually, they get pretty big, but this one stays fairly contained. This is a good one for hanging baskets, um, for regular baskets. They'll, they'll cascade. They don't go really far down. This one doesn't, but the, uh, the cascading ones do. They can actually hang down off the side of a pot pretty far. And I've seen them used in shopping centers and those big pots, you know, where the decorative dick big pots. These don't tend to get the um, bud worms like the zonal geraniums. The other geraniums that are more upright have a tendency to get some bud worms and that little worms into the flowers and then they, they get into the bud. They eat a hole in the bud and then it doesn't open. Ivy geraniums seem to not have that problem. You might get a few, but it's not like its cousins. So the ivy geranium is an awesome, and people say, ah, my mother grew those because your mom's smart. She knows that these plants are very hardy. And you can break these off the tips and stick them in the ground if it's moist. A lot of times they'll go ahead and grow. So these are the plants that can keep on giving. And they flower year round. These are one of those ones where people come in and say, I want something that flowers year round. This is it, ivy geranium. So then we're going to go to, this is called Callilophus. And or, um, let's see, what is the other one? Can't think of the other name. But if you look up, up, up Callilophus, you're going to find this plant 
and this one will spread pretty far it goes it's a ground cover so it gets about 10 12 inches and it'll go about two to three feet this one as well is a very drought tolerant plant um, it flowers most of the year about a couple months in the, out of the year it's not really flowering in the winter time but it's still green so it's not going to disappear on you and this one likes the heat it's really a good plant regular um, all these other ones except for the grevillea will take an all-purpose fertilizer no problem um, and grow powers is, is a good one that's a good one i like to, to recommend i didn't bring one out here today because i really wasn't thinking about talking about fertilizer but this one here is pentis or egyptian star flower and this one comes in purple white and pink and red different shades of pink some are some varieties are short some varieties are taller um, this one starts probably in about april yeah march april and it flowers until december january depending upon how cold it gets as soon as it gets cold this guy kind of goes into like defense mode it just kind of hangs out it's not really growing a whole lot Sometimes it can look a little spindly or weak in the winter time. If you can stand the look of it, it will come back. Um, I had my gardeners completely whack one of them that I had. The trunk on it was bigger than my thumb. And I thought, oh, he's dead. And sure enough, he grew back. So these guys are pretty hardy. They do like the full sun. They will take a little more water if they get a little more water. But if they don't, they're good with, with drying out between waterings. And these are hummingbird and butterfly and bee attractors. So these, this guy right here will do all three. And um, like I said, they are, a, a spec, as you can see, just a wonderful uh, show of color. And they're one of my favorites. I like, we even sell them in four inch. So that's a, that's a nice little plant to have in your garden. This one is called sea lavender or status and it has these little purple flowers. You see these a lot in the medians on the roads. Um, they are very drought tolerant. They are very hardy. They pretty much flower year round. There's another one that flowers year round and these flowers are like dried flowers. So they're like paper. So you can actually cut these and put these in flower arrangements and they last for a long time. This flower here will last probably for about two, three weeks. So, and then it's got one coming already, and there's, I'm sure, some down in here. It does have a tendency to um, have yellow leaves, so you just need to pull those, those yellow leaves off. It will, with age, start kind of making a little bit of a trunk. I've whacked those trunks, and they've, they've come back. So, this one, too, is pretty versatile, and it will take full sun to a part sun. It actually will grow in a part sun, sun situation. It will take a little more water or it'll actually go pretty dry between waterings and still be happy. So that's another good one. We also sell this one in six packs and four inch. So you can get, a, you know, for uh, I think $5, you can get a six, six of them, six little guys. They do take a little while to grow when they're little like that. But once they get going, they, they, just, they just keep on going. They'll probably last about two, three years in your landscape before you need to kind of really do anything with them as far as replacing. This is another one I like to recommend. This is Lantana. This is a bush Lantana. This one, they come in different sizes. There is a trailing. Let's see, this one is the Lucky Series. Lucky Series are about two, two feet by two foot, so they stay pretty much in a nice little area. There is a ground cover. There's a purple, white, purple one, a white one, and a yellow one that trail um and they can go pretty far and these these are another one that you can whack back if they don't look good just whack them back and even in the summertime i've seen them whack well my gardeners <laughs> well in my common area like to whack back these these lantanas and they come back with a vengeance so they're really good if you if you're not sure what you're doing you can really you know you can't really mess these guys up unless you smash them or you overwater them these are very drought tolerant. Once established, they like to dry out between waterings. They do not like overhead watering though. They will get a bacterial leaf spot. It doesn't kill them, but it does make the leaves all spotty. And again, you can cut it back and they'll grow out and get rid of that bacterial leaf spot. But with these, if you could avoid getting moisture on the leaves, that would be probably the best. Um, they're really good for containers and um, they also attract hummingbirds and butterflies and bees. This is another nectar uh, type plant for those insect or those animals and insects, I guess you'd call them. 
and so yeah this is a good plant it will flower most of the year except for maybe january february if we're really cold the white ones and the blue ones do not get that bacterial leaf spot so the trailing or the purple the trailing purple and the trailing um not blue purple trailing purple and trailing white do not get the bacterial leaf spot so if you want some lantanas and you've got overhead watering those are safe for that for that environment so that's that's another good one lantana these are salvias then they're as you can see they're different types of salvias and there's a lot of different salvias and they're also in the sage family so we, that just goes into a great big family and i as you can see i kind of like purple so this one is very vibrant we're in the shade right here right now because the camera would just burn up if we were in the sun but this guy really pops in the sun it's it's got such a nice vibrant blue color and again bluish purple i guess you would call it this is called salvia breeze and this is like a macrophylla or microphylla variety um gray guy variety <clears throat> and they stay more like around mop around ball and deadheading on these you would just take the pinch off the little dead flowers as they're as they're done and if you don't it's not really that picky but you can just do a little hedge prune if they're all or if they're all done you just kind of do a hedge prune how these work and this this salvia is the same they grow along and then they're flowering all summer long they start about april and they go until about december depending upon the weather and then they just kind of hang out. They don't really do a whole lot of growing, a lot of, a lot of, they just kind of hang out and they kind of start dying back a little bit, getting a little scraggly. And then when the spring comes, you'll start seeing some new growth at the base. Same with this one, new growth at the base. And you're like, oh, it's gonna grow out some new growth. So then you can come through and whack off all that old dead junk, that, that sc scraggly stuff, and let the new stuff regrow again. So then you've got like a refreshed plant. You don't have to dig it up and replace it. You just give it a haircut and, and give it some food and it'll grow right back. And then you're right back into giving these little beautiful flowers. Now these again are butterfly hummingbird attractors. Same with this one. This one, these get about two to three feet. This one can get about five to six feet. And this one is called Salvia Amigo. And they just such a really pretty pinky kind of lavendery flower. Lavery, violet maybe you'd call that. I don't know. But it's beautiful. And these guys again are hummingbird and butterfly attractors with uh, and bees as well. So and the same thing it has kind of has that winter funky look and then it grows at the base and you whack it and deadhead as you need to the more you deadhead these this variety not so much on this one but this variety does better if you're deadheading it on a regular basis and it's flowering putting up new buds all the time so there you go top 12 heat tolerant perennials and if you did like what you saw here today please click the like button if you have comments we love to to get the comments if you have any suggestions for future videos please do that as well in the comment section if you have not subscribed hit the subscribe button and the bell so that you know when we get when we have more videos thank you for watching and you have a great day